Johannesburg at the time. Yes, again, everyone protecting the gold mine fields, which are not very far in the southwest of Johannesburg and which were large, large deposits of gold. And again, to regulate people coming in into the region of the Witwatersrand and then the gold going out for trading. Now, because the British and the Afrikaners didn't see eye to eye, so the British were regarded as a glunners. Again, that is in Dutch, meaning outlanders or foreigners in Afrikaans. And yes, that's when the initial foot onto the south side was established. It was established between 1892 until 1893. So back then, everyone only housing only white male prisoners. Now, then a few years later, that's when section number four came as a second extension needed. Why? For the non-whites or African males. So by that time, they were classified as Africans, Indians, Chinese, and even colleagues from the mixed races were classified as non-whites. And this was a male section. So this was established in 1902. Now the finished form that we see was completed in 1927, so meaning it took about 25 years. Then the last section which was established later in the years was the female section. Now because Dutch was spoken, regarded as the Frosetrok, so from Afrikaans into English, meaning the woman's jail. It was established in 1909 until 1910. By then, the only section which was multiracial, but when it came to food, and also sleeping quarters. This is where these ladies were separated or segregated at that time. Yes, it was the prison nearly operated for 100 years. Established in 1893 as a working functional prison, stopping to exist, closing down in 1983, the last day of January of the year. So more or less about 100 years. Yes, I'd say about closing down, more or less about four decades when the prison stopped to exist. Now, I will start in point from Yeah, I was, uh, yeah, I was wondering how we got over there so fast. <laughs> so that's where I start. Now, All everyone, right, come closer to the side. Now, we are actually looking onto the D diet or the food area. So, this is how food would be administered. Plates would be lined up right here, and then the parts would be put right here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I know today myself, a father of four. I do help out, cook. Nah, I'd say cooking, it's my just frying an egg or boiling an egg. But I can do the rest. But an African custom is that men don't cook, men don't clean. Now, this is where when you are male and you're in prison jail, the men would be doing the cooking inside the prison and then distributing the food in all different points. Yes, these men would be taken and there was a huge massive kitchen, which was called a mass hall, onto the fort side. That's where these men would be taken. After that, this is how you'd actually receive your meals. Now, ladies and gentlemen, let's glance back. Right there behind this, those would be the parts which the food would be prepared. Now, yes again, a huge piece of marking paper would be floating on top of the food so that no error was made where the food was allocated. Then, ladies and gentlemen, you have the Christmas treats. Why? This is a choice between pudding, Okay, then the non-white prison set of tools between coffee and tea on Christmas. And yes, everyone, that would be your Christmas treats. Then going back onto the D diet, I actually want to focus on the word which is above the German salt, which is called Uzamanda. Now, that is actually derived from Zulu, which is also one of the native languages that we speak. So, I speak eight, comes nine, ten with English and Afrikaans. So, when you divide that word, Puza literally means to drink. Manda means power, energy, or strength. So, you combine it into one word. It means drinking power, drinking energy, or drinking strength. Yes, it was an energy supplement. Now, the ingredient where this is taken from, we call it mealies or maize. You may call it corn. Mm -hmm. comes in a brown powder form. So like these energy supplements that you find in a pot full, pour the substance, mix it with water, stir it for a few seconds, and then drink it immediately. Mm. Now, as you can see, it was only given to African prisoners. Why? Because farmers, contractors around Johannesburg would be coming to this prison looking for cheap labor. So that's why they were given this, so they could be fit, be strong, be able to work in the fields, mm. and also around Johannesburg. Mm. Now, from this point of view, please do have a read, take some pictures, even onto the panels, even behind. I'll give you more or less about five to four minutes inside you, then we'll be looking into the salts. Okay, okay. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, this is the presentation family life in a cell.
But one of the incredible things, family, when you come to these um, incredible museums, historical places, you know, you take your time and go around and read the information and so on. Uh, gui some guides are different from others. Some guides go in depth, some guides don't. But uh, did you come here earlier? Did you come here earlier? What about right here? Okay, maybe he'll do this presentation a little bit different, but these are two incredible presentations that talks about life in a cell. What could be? No, no, but you probably, no, this is a, this is Yeah, this is, um, usually, I guess everybody do it different, but this is a major part of the presentation. The guy feeling like he's more, I don't know, he, when trying to be a comedian or something at the beginning. That's what we talk about, number four and black people in person. But Life in a Cell is a great presentation. So. Now, from this point, ladies and gentlemen, any questions from your side? So far, so good. So, from this point, it's us inside. Now, before we enter inside, ladies and gentlemen, now, this was more or less like the Alcatraz of South Africa before Robin Island being a what's this, the maximum prison. But this was actually the first maximum prison which was established. Now, going into the late 40s, going into the, old say, also mid 50s, that's when now Robben Island from a leprosy colony was transformed into a maximum prison that we know today. But before that time, it was a leprosy colony, not a maximum prison. Going into the late 40s, 50s, that's when it was transformed into a maximum prison that we know today. So the only prisoner that never got here was only Steve Biko, Lillian Ngoi, Winnie Mandela, Barbara Hogan, all of these at one point had came inside these walls, ladies and gentlemen. I'd say from zero to 100%, 80% of the prisoners who came inside here were mainly for political reasons. Then the 30%, it would differ different types of crimes that you actually had during that time. Now, from this point, let's do it. Okay, quick question. You said Steve Biko was not here. Yeah, yes. Okay. 